the material in that anti-tail has to be a million times bigger than the solar wind's density. Whoa. Let's just pause on that. Mm. A million times denser than the solar wind. That number just sounds absurd. It is mind boggling. The solar wind is already incredibly thin, you know, just a few protons per cubic centimeter. So requiring a million times, that means this thing has to be hemorrhaging material at an unbelievable rate just to hold that shape. So what does that mean in terms of actual mass loss? How much material is it shedding? Well, the calculation shows that to maintain that structure, a natural comet would need a mass flux of 200 tons per second across a relatively small area. 200 tons a second. And when you extrapolate that over the whole observation period, October and November, the total estimated mass loss, just to create the visible tails, it comes out to a few billion tons. A few billion tons, okay. That sounds like a lot, but now we get to the real conflict, where this mass loss figure creates a huge problem for the object's total mass budget. This is the crux of it, yes. We have to compare that few billion tons of lost mass with how big we think 3 Ia tails actually is. The initial baseline mass, calculated earlier by the source author, was a minimum of 33 billion tons. And why was 33 billion tons the minimum? Because for months, July, August, September, researchers couldn't detect any non-gravitational acceleration. And for anyone listening, non-gravitational acceleration is basically just thrust. It's thrust. For a comet, it's when the sun heats up an icy spot gas shoots out, and it acts like a tiny rocket. If you don't see any thrust, it implies the object is so massive that these little jets aren't strong enough to move it. So no thrust meant it had to be at least 33 billion tons. That was the baseline, yes. Okay, so the math is initial mass, 33 billion tons. Mass lost to create the tails we see, a few billion tons. That's, what, around 10% of its minimum mass? Why is that a problem? It's a problem because everything changed in October. Around perihelion, its closest approach to the sun, non-gravitational acceleration was measured significantly. And this wasn't just a slight wobble. Not at all. This detection, reported by JPL Horizons, is statistically overwhelming. It's confirmed at 10 standard deviations. 10 sigma. I mean, the chance of that being random error is practically zero. This object was thrusting unequivocally. Exactly. So now we apply momentum conservation. Thrust equals mass flow rate times exhaust velocity. If you stick with the natural comet idea, where the exhaust speed is only 400 meters per second. At a very slow speed. At very slow speed. Then to generate the amount of thrust we measured, the object would have had to lose more than 10% of its total mass. Wait. So the visible tail required about 10% of its mass. And the measured acceleration at that low speed mm -hmm. also required more than 10% of its mass. It sounds like it would have had to consume itself to do both. You've hit the scientific hurdle, 